很久以前，它是印第安人的土地。四百年前，它是荷兰人的一道墙。百年前，它是梧桐树下的金融种子；一百年前，它塑造了美国的崛起。它是一张洒向世界的金融之网，这张网强大又脆弱，光明又黑暗。这张网既能让经济加速，又能让经济窒息。它就是华尔街。This is a um, question that has been asked ever since human beings have walked the face of the earth. Why do bad things happen? God is eternally good and wants good things, and he created the, the world uh, for good. Why do bad things happen? Wall Street to a lot of people means that that's where the wealth of the country is, that that's where the financial center. But after this financial crisis, so many of the firms no longer exist. So. It's really just a street name. 二零零八年的金融危机，华尔街已经把世界的经济变得伤痕累累。然而，只要金融业存在，这就不是第一次，也不会是最后一次。苏西是美国公共广播电视台的新闻主播。二零零八年，华尔街金融危机爆发的时候，他正在纽交所的直播间进行报道。For a long time, there were many economists who were saying we're in a recession as early as January of of 2008, and no one wanted to say it's a recession. It took a long, long time for the Federal Reserve and other policymakers to finally use what we call the R word to say it's a recession. The next thing that happened was that it was a financial crisis, and it wasn't just a normal economic downturn. Hi, it's Susie. Uh, just to, wanted to make sure you guys can hear me. It was everything went from kind of a slow day to speeding up at 100 miles an hour. But as journalists, we enjoy the excitement of covering a story. But for the sake of the country, we knew that this was going to be a serious problem, and it was going to be an ongoing financial crisis. Now we're at 50. Now we're at 20. Now we're at 10. Now we're at zero. You know, and the whole way down. That was a huge company to fail. It had been around for more than 100 years, and suddenly Lehman Brothers is gone, and that was a real shock. 雷曼兄弟公司曾是美国的第四大投资银行。二零零八年，受到次贷危机的影响，公司股票一周内暴跌百分之七十七，公司市值从一百一十二亿美元大幅缩水至二十五亿美元。如果继续失去市场信心，这家公司将飞速地滑向金融悬崖。These decisions and actions were both prudent and appropriate. I never sold my shares because I believed in this company. Executives would always say, "Don't worry about it. We've been through this before. Lehman was through this in '98. Uh, we'll be fine." And we trusted them because, you know, why, why wouldn't we have? This is a company that was founded in 1850. 曾经历过美国经济百年来的起伏，平安度过历次危机，被称为华尔街的不死鸟
，二零零八年九月的一个周末，投资者的撤离让雷曼奄奄一息。公司等待着最后的救赎，来自政府的援助。So whenever anybody got in trouble on Wall Street, they would call up the central bank and say, "Save me, save me." They made many, many mistakes, though. So some of them have no one to blame but themselves. I got no severance, no golden parachute. Lehman Brothers got caught in this financial tsunami. Government can't go in and, and save everybody. These were people that made many mistakes. Nobody expected the government to turn them down. They thought, well, when it comes right down to the last minute. And they didn't. 二零零八年九月十五日，当最后的一线希望破灭后，雷曼破产了。他一百五十八年的生命宣告结束。Since we were going into bankruptcy, that the company was shutting down, so we didn't even know if we'd be let into the building the next day. I remember Sunday night, it was like from the managing directors to the analysts who just started, everyone was. Putting what they had in these big boxes and carrying them out out of the building, any sort of thing they could do to help, and there was really nothing. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all had an enjoyable weekend. But the American people can remain confident in the soundness and the resilience of our financial system. Welcome back. That statement certainly true in the case of Lehman Brothers shares, of which have been down as much as 18%. It's a tough day. 而鲍尔森所描述的稳固的金融体系已经不复存在。第二天，道琼斯指数自开市就下跌了数百点，美国金融市场崩溃了。雷曼倒闭，它使这个危机瞬间变成一片市场的恐慌。This is serious. This is a crisis. When even the most experienced, veteran, talented traders and investors are scared and panicked, that really says something. Lehman 破产后，有多家华尔街重量级金融机构陷入破产和被收购的窘境，美国陷入了百年一遇的金融危机中。We knew there was going to be. A huge amount of layoffs. We knew there was going to be a huge problem in the industry. It was already tough to find another job, so we started thinking about, you know, what our passions are, what the opportunities are. Started calling friends, you know, family. What, what are the next? What are the next steps? What should I do? And I. As a result, our unemployment insurance system has been stretched to the breaking point. Frankly. Sometimes they would shed large numbers of workers all at once, 100, 200, 300. But the more typical case was every week they'd let go of 25, 50, and that would continue for weeks and weeks. African American male unemployment in New York City is well over 20 percent. So this is very much at the highest levels, certainly in most of our lifetimes. So we're sort of unfortunately setting records as we speak. 这场起于华尔街的风暴，接下来将会刮向哪里？会持续多久？会带来怎样的影响？人们无从知道答案。It was frightening because California hasn't been through something this bad since the Great Depression. The worst part of it is probably not knowing where the bottom is. Every time we looked at the numbers, they seemed to get worse. 加利福尼亚州位于美国西部。与美国东海岸的纽约有四千多公里的距离。金融危机爆发后不到一个月的时间，加州就受到了风暴的冲击。加州是美国经济总量最大的一个州，它的国民生产总值超过世界上许多的国家。加州天然的地理环境造就了发达的农业，好莱坞和硅谷也都来自这里。同时，他还有一位明星州长，阿诺德·施瓦辛格。二零零九年，加州面临着危机的考验，政府预算赤字达到二百六十三亿美元，几乎濒临破产。I came in on the first day of the Schwarzenegger administration. We all worked together to get through the tough times. It was really tough. Is that when the economy turns down, all of our tax revenues go down, and all of our many of our people now go from being employed to needing help from government. 
And so the two things really hit us hard. Some other states have talked to us and said, you can't fail because if you fail, we all go down. I think it, it had to be done and we couldn't fail. Wall Street became famous because it was always blamed for the financial problems the country had. In the long run, Wall Street became known as a place where good things did not happen. It's the side of America that we're, not, we're ambivalent about in this country. We recognize that it creates great wealth, it can, and it also creates great catastrophes. It has done so in the past. Hardy 美国政府出资八百五十亿美元都在询问原因都在质问谁该对此负责 Cab driver asked why I worked and I said oh I, you know I used to work at Lehman Brothers now I'm unemployed and he started yelling at me you know like I'm some sort of bad guy so, oh you bastard and you stole all this from me and, and I was you know it was kind of I, I, didn't, I didn't even know what to think I said I'm not the bad guy I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong a great many things going on one of the things I loved was People say, who is responsible for this? And you would think they would find one person that was responsible, or five people, or ten people that were responsible. The truth is, everybody played a role. Everybody. Charlie is a big investment company. As a investor, how to learn from the crisis is more important than In his 50-year-old career, 他经历过很多次危机，而在他记忆最深处的，却源于他童年的大萧条时代。My father was a student at Yale, and his father had had a nice business in Iowa, middle of the United States, and he had a very high level of confidence that he would go back to Iowa and work with his father in his father's company. Uh, by the end of a year, there, it was a factory manufacturing tractors. There were no orders for tractors. And my father was the last person working in the factory, sweeping up and cleaning out, and then he went elsewhere to, to work. So he experienced directly the impact. Charlie was born in the 20th and 30th century. He 他们是危机中成长的一代人萧条 There was obviously uh, sort of excessive speculation in the country in the late 1920s. Uh, and part of it was due to the fact that money was pretty cheap. You know, people got uh, uh, sort of enamored of Wall Street. They, they thought they could get rich quick by buying a stock and having it go up 50 or 100 percent in a short time. And so that drew a lot of money in, and this is a characteristic of all crises. I mean, that's why they keep on happening. We have, we get interested in speculating. Today's 
，持续了多年的经济繁荣结束于一个普通的秋天。这是有记录以来最大的一次股市崩盘。市场的过度狂热，往往是危机爆发前的信号。在一九二九年。人们宁可借钱，也要在股市中碰运气，而美联储在很长的时间里一直降低借款利率，让人们很容易得到银行贷款进行股市投机。那一年，每一亿美元的贷款就有四十美分投入股市。Shoe shine boys were giving stock tips. Everybody was investing in the market. It was wild. It was it was like a wild party, and no one is interested in the The teetotaler who's saying, you know, it's time to turn off the lights and go home. 作家凯瑟琳出生在一个银行世家，她的家族在二十世纪初从德国来到美国。家族里最出色的银行家是她的曾祖父，保罗·沃伯格。他在一九二九年的经历让凯瑟琳对这位从未见过面的曾祖父产生了好奇。保罗看到了股市中过度的投机和泡沫，被人们称为“危机的预言家”。In March of 1929, Paul Warburg predicted the scope and severity of the looming crisis, and he warned in a speech to Congress, "If orgies of unrestrained speculation are permitted to spread too far, the ultimate collapse is certain, not only to affect the speculators themselves, but also to bring about a general depression involving the entire country." 但此时的美国已经没法停下脚步。四个月内，六十家新公司在纽交所上市，为股市注入超过一亿元的股份。一轮更大的泡沫满足着投资者的热情。没有人会相信，持续了多年的经济繁荣将会以灾难的方式结束。How would you feel if you saw a train about to crash and you told people, you know? Terrible things are about to happen, and everyone said, "I don't see that. Don't worry about it." People talk about him today as Cassandra, because Cassandra not only could foretell the future, but nobody believed her. I think he felt responsible and burdened by his lack of power, by his sense that he had done all he could do and it wasn't enough. It didn't save the situation. 一九二九年十月二十四日，股市以毫无预警的方式崩溃了，股价一天之内下跌了三分之一。有十一个人在这一天选择了跳楼自杀。人们后来用“黑色星期四”来命名这个灾难性的一天。黑色，也代表着华尔街最恐惧的日子。In 1929, one of the owners of the stockyard, when the stock market, stock market crashed, he lost all of his money. So depressed that he decided to end his life, and this is the area that he did it in、uh, by hanging himself, and he has been with us ever since. This isn't just rich people getting less rich. This is people really being wiped out catastrophically. People losing everything. You can't have a crisis unless it's unexpected, and as the prices come down, people say, "Oh, look, prices are coming down," and get more frightened and more surprised. And if it compounds and builds into something really quite strong, a little bit like typhoon, why do storms really have such an impact? Well, because they gather the momentum and they gather the strength, and then they come flashing in from the ocean to the land side. The crisis burst out. 股民聚集到纽交所门口，恐惧的情绪在庞大的人群中蔓延。经济危机又间接引发了遍及整个资本主义世界的大萧条。五千万人失业，无数人流离失所，上千亿美元财富付诸东流，生产停滞。而曾经对危机做出预警的保罗·沃伯格，却同样遭到了人们的指责。What did he know? How did he know it? He must have made it happen. You know that he that he he must have had a hand in it in some way, this or that it all went according to his plan. You know, which is ignorant.、Uh, it broke. I think it broke his heart. 
my grandfather said to me, his father was a sad optimist. And in some ways, that's a burden. 保罗·沃伯格患上新脚痛去世,再也没有看到危机的离去. It was a real uh, missed opportunity, and I think he died knowing that. People are so wonderfully the same. We don't quite learn the same, the lessons we should learn. My mother died of cancer from smoking. You don't have to know more than we now know. We still have large numbers of people smoking. And if you ask them, well, don't you realize that you could die? Oh, I don't think that'll happen to me. That's who we are as human beings. 金融危机用它带来灾难的方式证明了它的存在。I don't have to report to any specific location every day at 7 o'clock, but there's a number of things I need to do at you know, 12 o'clock at night time or 1 o'clock at night time. It's a really grand opportunity, and it's really quite an adventure to be able to work on an international scale. Stephen, 曾经在华尔街一家投资银行工作。二零零八年，公司在金融危机中破产了。破产的第二天，斯蒂芬成为了纽约九十万失业者中的一员。Other folks looked for jobs. For me, I started working on Greensill Shoes the next day. 斯蒂芬新事业开始的地方是纽约的一家小型办公楼。低廉的租金吸引了很多小创业者。在金融危机失业率上升的时候，创业成为很多美国人开始新生活的尝试。My vision is to help companies or build companies on my own that deliver value for a long time. We hope that in the next five years we'll be able to sell and give one million shoes. And if we could accomplish that goal, then I'd be very happy indeed. Financial crises are not necessarily terrible. I think this is a time where companies, you know, some companies may grow their businesses significantly, but I think this is a time to really perfect your business. In the financial crisis, anyone can work, a company can work, the society can work. But just using these forces to face such a big crisis is not enough. 只有依靠国家的力量、政治的力量，寻找拯救的方法。My interest is solely for the strength and the recovery of the U.S. economy. I believe if the credit markets are not functioning, that jobs will be lost, the unemployment rate will rise. I therefore think this is a precondition for a good, healthy recovery by our economy. Okay, announced anything in terms of actually giving the money back? So maybe it's just like an encouraging message or something like that. 苏西作为美国公共广播电视台的主播，跟踪报道了美国政府危机后救市的每个环节。在他看来，这次危机中争议最大的一个措施是政府花了将近八千亿美元注资到那些陷入困境的金融机构中，这就等于每个美国公民要平摊两千五百美元的负担。在美国，动用纳税人的钱是有诸多限制的。历史上，税收是美国社会运行当中非常敏感的事情。美国人曾因为征收税收而发起了一场国家独立的战争，那一年是一七七五年，史称“独立战争”。当时的美国还是英国的殖民地，由于百年的发展，殖民地逐渐变得富有，而此时的英国开始将税收的压力转嫁给殖民地。在独立战争前的十几年时间里，相继出现了各种各样的印花税，北美殖民地的人愤怒了。某种程度来讲，是因为税收问题才诞生了这个国家。而二零零八年的这一次，
，用政府八千亿美元注资到金融机构，再一次触动了美国人的神经。Why is the taxpayer have to spend 787 billion dollars to bail out these companies? Why should we, the Americans taxpayer, have to pay this money? And it took a while to explain that if we don't, that some of these uh, big financial firms will fail. And that's where that whole phrase came up, too big to fail. Is it important to have it, you know, that companies are too big to fail? Should we let them fail? Should the American capitalism free enterprise system let the, the, the successful companies survive and let the weak ones fail? The way that things are structured in a lot of uh, banks is it's capitalist if things go well. That is, if things go well, I make money uh, from the use of my capital and my efforts. But it's socialistic if things go poorly. That is, if things go very poorly, I just walk away and the taxpayers are saddled with the cost. Because this is not something that I ever wanted to ask for, but it's much better than the alternative. So what I do is I start off saying, I'm not only concerned, I'm angry by the things that got us here, okay? But the greatest protection for the American taxpayer. By far the greatest protection is having this program work and having it be effective because the consequences if it doesn't are worse. 2008 年危机爆发以来，美国共有近三百家银行倒闭，政府投入了数万亿美元的资金来挽救破产的金融机构，重新启动几乎陷入停滞的金融业。这成为了美国在拯救2008年金融危机当中最大的动作，而在其他的政府机构，也相继采取了各种措施。突然而来的危机，迫使政府采取非常规的做法，这可能是危机中唯一的选择。We had to cut many programs, reduce spending dramatically. We cut my pay 13.86%. And I'm not complaining, but we cut all the other state employees' pay the same. And the way we did that was with a three-day-a-month furlough. That's tough. It, it's hard to operate some of these essential services when people take three Fridays a month off. Uh, but it's the only way we could get the pay scales down, and we had to get them down right away. So we pursued additional resources from our federal government. We applied for a national emergency grant. National emergency grants are uh, funds available for particular crisis situations in specific uh, companies or the way we were pursuing it in the financial service sector. Because what we were seeing is large numbers of dislocations from many, many firms. Flooding the markets with liquidity was really well done. And very bold decisions that were very new were taken in rapid sequence all over the place. So, I think we ought to look back and say we were well served. In the crisis,我们应该扮演怎样的角色？如何制定应急措施和长久机制？在金融危机爆发后的两年时间里，从美国到整个世界都没有停止思考。今天的人们希望从历史中汲取拯救的经验和教训。八十年前。美国正面临同样严峻的危机，它如何一步步走出萧条的泥潭 ？It was really a devastation across the country and then across the world. The 1929, the economy after Paul Warburg's lifetime deteriorated even further and more rapidly in the intervening months,、um, the last months of Hoover's presidency. 今天。很多人的观点认为，胡佛政府在经济衰退期平衡预算和紧缩开支的做法是悲剧性的错误。美国的经济从1930年开始进入衰退，三分之一的银行倒闭，股票崩盘，以及接下来所有的贫穷痛苦，被理所当然地算到总统胡佛头上。1929年。他在一开始的股市崩盘中反应乐观，他断言，这次股市崩盘对失业最严重的冲击在未来六十天内即将消失
1929, the president at the time, Herbert Hoover, said that the whole crisis would go away if people actually just worked their way out of their problems. Hoover的乐观主义并不能阻止形式的恶化，到一九三一年的秋天，等待发放免费面包的漫长队伍，用硬纸板拼凑起来的贫民区和在城市空旷地带靠飞金属碎片搭建的房屋等，遍布美国各
which has the mandate under the Securities Act of 1933 to regulate Wall Street and other stock exchanges in the United States and to clean them up. And Roosevelt decides, I have exactly the man for that job. 第一届美国证监会主席是罗斯福提出的人选，他把目光对准了华尔街的投机商。约瑟夫·肯尼迪是美国第三十五任总统约翰·肯尼迪的父亲，在人们眼里，他喜欢操纵市场。然而，这次危机给他带来了极大的震撼。I saw Roosevelt as the only man who could make the difference, and I decided, I promised myself, that I would give half of what I had earned to protect the other half in safety for my family. Washington's stockbroker has become a change maker. In 1934, he was elected to the Roosevelt Board. The SEC was new power because every time you write a letter, you're writing new law. A lot of people were aghast. Um, they thought this was putting the fox to be in charge of the hen house. You know, they thought they thought that Joseph Kennedy was part of the problem, not part of the solution. But Roosevelt said, "No, no, you just wait and see." Um, and Kennedy, who was very, very smart man. Um, he realized that his self-interest lay in being an effective chairman of the SEC, and he did know where the bodies were buried. He knew where all the dirty tricks were played because he'd been playing them himself, and so he was a very effective chairman of the of the SEC. He was it was a good idea to put the fox in charge of the hen house. 对华尔街各种伎俩非常熟悉的肯尼迪，制定了堵住漏洞的监管法规。这也让华尔街看到了罗斯福整顿市场的决心和政治智慧。罗斯福的改革在人们的怀疑声中艰难的推行，但最终改变了华尔街的面貌。A lot of our modern securities market regulation and even banking regulations came up in the Great Depression of the 1930s under President Franklin Roosevelt. In fact, the regulation seemed to work pretty well for Wall Street because it, it renewed the confidence of the American people in, in the market institution, the banks and the securities markets. The United States' economic downturn continued for over 10 years. In the crisis, Roosevelt established a government that served the people. He did not pay any attention to the legislation, and it was created a new freedom of the four freedoms. 其中，免于匮乏的自由成为美国社会保障体系建立的精神内涵。从此，美国诞生了社会保障法，而一系列涉及社会保障与管制的法律，永远地改变了美国的经济、政治和社会哲学。罗斯福也获得了总统连任。被人们看作是成功带领美国走出危机的领航者，而此时罗斯福却陷入了个人危机。从年轻时，他便身患小儿麻痹症，他几乎对所有人隐瞒了病情。而就在所有人觉得他高大无比的时候，他无法站立。此后，他的生活再也没有摆脱轮椅。他也被称为坐在轮椅上转动世界的人，而今天的人们仍然记得他曾经说过的那句话：“最大的恐惧就是恐惧本身。” These reforms represent the strongest consumer financial protections in history. Because of this law, the American people will never again be asked to foot the bill for Wall Street's mistakes. There will be no more tax-funded bailouts. Period. Eighty years later, people are hoping for a new regulation that will change the financial system of America, and also protect the people from the worst and worst parts of it. I think we want to be sure that we protect the creativity and the dynamics at the interior and the core 
of the financial markets. On the other hand, I think we want to protect the system from getting disrupted, and we want to protect individual people from being badly treated. And the reality is that a very, very complicated, fast-changing financial system with new instruments coming in and new players coming in and new things going on is a very delicate process. We as human beings are fallible. We all make mistakes. None of us work perfectly. And sometimes those little things that may not be the right thing to do have consequences long term that we're not able to know at the time. This bridge has a history of 350 years of history. Because of its unique position, 也伴随着几代华尔街人度过他们的喜怒哀乐。关于危机的历史，就记载在教堂的年鉴里。但是，今天没有人会再去翻阅。在这条崇尚财富的街道，只有危机再次降临的时候，历史才会从纸上浮现出来。Nobody likes to go through an economic downturn, whether you're an American or whether you're Chinese. There's this thing called generational imprinting, that when a generation goes through a, uh, a severe economic crisis like this, that when good times come back, they tend to still play it safe. When the New York Times was closed, people left this most popular place in the night. 新闻主播苏西要一个人在这里面对镜头录制一天的商业新闻，告诉美国人今天的华尔街都发生了什么。无论带来的是好消息还是坏消息，苏西都要让自己微笑着面对镜头。We've had crises in Wall Street roughly every twenty years. Apparently, it takes about a generation for people to forget the lessons of the last crash, and so we have another one. Uh, we have one in 1792, 1819, 1837, 1857, 1873, 1893, 1907, and 今天的华尔街，没有人知道下一次危机将何时到来，会从哪里开始。在危机不断上演的历史长河里，每个人、每个机构、每个国家，要想减少危机带来的伤害，唯一能做的，是在下一次危机到来之前，做好准。在大国的博弈中，金融充当怎样的角色？在资本市场的角逐中，国与国之间展开怎样的博弈？探寻一个国家的金融力量，寻找世界的金融格局。敬请收看《华尔街》第十集《资本之河》。